In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was all over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. There was light. God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness He called night, and it was so. God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water, and it was so. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to the various columns. And it was so. And God said, let there be lights in the vaults of the sky to separate the day from night, and let them serve as signs to mark times and days and years. Let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give lights on earth, and it was so. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky, and it was so. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its own kind. And it was so. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image. So they made fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals all over the creatures that move along the ground. And it was so. God saw all that he made, and it was very good. But creation rebelled against God. Mankind sinned and was separated from him. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, so also Death was passed on to all men because all have sinned. But God still loved mankind, and it was never his desire to be separated from those he created. In his promise to Adam and Eve, God reveals his plan to save mankind. For since death came through men, the resurrection of the dead also through man. As time went on, men increased in numbers and nations filled deeper. Jews were set apart by God and were promised the Messiah, his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandment and decrees blamelessly. They were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go in the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side 
the altar of the incense. Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice. Because of his birth, he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink, and he will be filled with Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many people with Israel to the Lord. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. How? How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zachariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. People were astonished. He was in, indeed unable to speak to them. They realized that he had a vision in the sanctuary. He gestured to them but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. At this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived the child and she went into seclusion for five months. About 80 miles north of the city of Judah, in the mountains of Galilee, there was a remote town of Nazareth. Streets of this town were narrow and the houses were close to each other. Men would spend most of the day working right outside their front door. Wives were right behind them in their houses while children were at play and running around in the streets of Nazareth. Here in this town lived a relative of Elizabeth, Mary. She was a young, modest, God-fearing girl and was quoted by a young, honest and hard-working man named Joseph who had intent to ask for a hand in marriage. Wow, this is gorgeous. Where did you get this? Did you make it yourself? No, wait, did Joseph give this to you? Yes, isn't it beautiful? I think you two were made for each other. You're going to be great. Let's go down to the river. Yes, shall we? That would be awesome. Oh, I forgot my vessel. I have to take it home. I'll meet you girls at the river. Shalom, Mary. Shalom. I have something to tell you. Mary, I have been saving and planning to build a home for a while and I believe I am ready to start a family now. I have been thinking and praying about us for a long time and I know for certain that God has blessed my decision. Mary, I have talked to your parents. They have given their consent. Now I want to ask you, Mary. Mary, do you agree to be my wife? Yes, Joseph, of course. If God blesses, then I agree. It's always been a mystery to me How two hearts can come together Love can last forever but Now that I have found you, I believe That a miracle has come When God sends the perfect one Gone are all my questions about why And I've never been so sure of anything in my life I wonder what God was thinking 
going to be a wife in India and a mother. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. What a strange greeting. Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she was said to be unable to conceive. She is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant.
the advent of the Messiah was expected not only by the Jews, almost all the pagans living around the land of Israel were heard by him. But you, Bethlehem, you, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will be ruler over Israel. There shall come forth a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. It's fascinating that such an inhospitable birthplace is for the Messiah. God who created this all came down to be with us to save us and show us how life should be lived. He could have chosen anywhere to build a palace for himself. That would have made the grand structures of the Roman Empire seem like nothing. But he didn't. God chose Bethlehem. He saw himself to be among the poor if the words of this prophet are true. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with scarce and moat. But in the troubled time, after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. The Messiah will come in our lifetime? Are you saying it's just a matter of years? If these scriptures are right, we should be preparing for the journey immediately. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home. Shalom Elizabeth, Shalom Mary. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb left for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful for the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation.
did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Child, your whole day is the, the great. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. She was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant. Joseph, I have broken no vows. I am telling you the truth. Do you know why I chose you, Mary? Because I thought you were a woman of great virtue. I have lived my life seeking honor and if I claim this child is mine, I would be lying. I would break the law laid down by God. I am not asking you to lie, Joseph. I am asking you to believe me. Believe you, Mary? Our God can do miracles, but this thing has never been heard of. How do you expect me to believe in this? I'm sorry. And I believe I am ready to start the family now. Yes, Joseph, of course. If God blesses, then I agree. I broke no vows. She is crazy. Just dishonored her family. Humiliate her! Tell people who she really is. No, no, I can't do this. No, I can't do this. That is not the will of God. I will not expose her to public disgrace. I shall quietly let her go. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, which means the Lord saves because he will save his people from their sins. Mary, the angel of the Lord appeared to me in a dream. We will call him Jesus. Great is he who will save his people from their sins. You believe me? Yes, I believe you. I will take care of him as my own. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. During the journey, Mary was nearly ready to give birth to her baby, although tired and weary. Herod tyrannically ruled in Judea. He was granted the title King of Judah by the Roman Senate. Herod was a brutal ruler who wouldn't let anyone stand in the way of his reign. He executed his wife and several members of his own family to secure his throne. Your Excellency, to Jerusalem came some wise men from the east and they talk of some, some prophecy adoring a new king? The prophecy, it's a myth, Your Excellency, embraced by those who aren't wise enough to worship the true king. What is unwise is to take such a prophecy too lightly. They believe there's a new king to be born in Judea. Where? In Judea? In Bethlehem, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the ruler of Judah. 
for out of you will come a ruler who would shepherd my people Israel we should send soldiers to follow them to find the king they are seeking it will arise suspicion invite them to the palace herod called the magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared I have been studying the words of prophecy for years. Out of Bethlehem should come a ruler. Yes, your excellency. We have studied prophecies as well. We have waited a lifetime for signs as we see now. We have been waiting for God's new king. Tell me, what do you know about him? If our calculations are right, a child would be born in our lifetime. of a lifetime hmm you should go and search carefully for the child as soon as you find him report it to me so that i too may go and worship him after they had heard the king they went on the way and the star they had seen when it arose went ahead of them and they were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night do not be afraid i bring you good news that will cause a great joy for all the people today in the town of david a savior has been born to you he is the messiah the lord this will be a sign to you you will find the baby in the cloth lying in the manger After a long and exhausting 4-day voyage, the young couple finally came to Bethlehem. When they arrived, they knocked on every door in the town, looking for a place to stay. But every place they tried was turned down. Each time they were given the same answer. Word had got around that the child to be born was an illegitimate, and nobody wanted to give shelter to sin. Joseph, the baby. Yes, yes, we are finally here. Don't worry. I promise I'll find a place to stay. God be with you. Is there a place for me and my wife to stay? She's having a child. And you Joseph from Nazareth. No room for people like you.
someone here to help us? I can't find anyone. Hey, wait a minute. Look there. There are so many people. And are they coming here? Abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. 